My name is Claire Woodcraft. I'm the CEO of Emirates Foundation, which is a foundation based in the UAE focused on youth development. So for us, we consider youth is uh, 15 to 35. So basically what I was talking about and one of the things we're working uh, on at Emirates Foundation is obviously trying to help young people become more entrepreneurial. And uh, so we've been looking at the challenges, what stops young people becoming more entrepreneurial. And we've identified five areas where we think there is a uh, particular issue that can discourage young people from setting up their own businesses. And those five are quite simply, um, first of all, patient capital. So in other words, money that's willing to hang around while you set up your business and make it scalable and financially viable. We know there is money available for entrepreneurs, but it's not necessarily patient nor risk capital. So that's the first area. Second area is a business acumen, entrepreneurial skills. So often there isn't enough of that. So you might have a one day training on how to set up your business, but rarely is one day enough for you to really be able to go on and create your own business. The third one is a regulatory reform. So often in the region, it's difficult to actually register your business and um, quite costly. So again, if you can't set your business up and register it quickly and cost effectively, that's going to discourage you. Uh, the fourth one is accessing um, supply chains. So we know that um, it's quite difficult in many parts of the region to access very structured uh, supply chains. Often you might have big parastatals that dominate economic activity and that's not encouraging for a new startup. Clearly you want to be able to sell your products to, uh, to lots of people. If you can't access uh, company supply chains, that's difficult. And the final one, which is as we talked about today, perhaps the most important for women, is the issue of non-financial support. So how as a young startup, startup entrepreneur do you get some mentoring, some coaching? How do you get someone to help you understand technical issues around your business? How do I market my products? How do I access capital? How do I manage uh, my cash flow. Uh, it's a big challenge. Many SMEs, small to medium sized enterprises, go out of business because they can't manage their cash flow effectively. And if you don't get taught that stuff, then it's quite difficult to create a successful enterprise. And we should remember that the vast majority of startup enterprises globally fail. Yes, so on the one hand, I think uh, the issues facing women are exactly the same as the issues facing men. So those five challenges that I already mentioned. Um, but I think there is an additional dimension for women. So those five challenges can be addressed much more easily if you have access to the public sphere and you have good professional networks that can help you a lot. So the challenge for women, particularly those coming from more conservative backgrounds or even geographically remote backgrounds, or perhaps women who've not had full access to educational system, notwithstanding the fact that educational uh, levels in the Middle East are improving rapidly. Uh, but is that women in, in those more conservative backgrounds don't necessarily have regular access to the public sphere. So that can prevent their ability to create professional networks and in turn can also impact on their confidence. So if you are raised uh, as men tend to be from an early age, you're out there in the community, in society, in the majlis, talking to um, people who are older than you, more senior, more experienced, you not only learn, but you learn how to be in the public sphere, you learn how to network, you learn how to connect, um, and it also helps you build your general awareness of the business community. If women don't have that access from an early age, they are obviously disadvantaged. And we see that with some of the work we do with female entrepreneurs is that they may have great ideas and and um, great business acumen, but they, they don't have the confidence, so they often spend a lot of time challenging themselves, questioning themselves, self-doubt. So we think it's very powerful to have a, a mentor or to have that support, and that's something we uh, have introduced into our social enterprise program at the foundation, is to make sure that those social entrepreneurs have absolutely a mentor, but also that non-financial support, such as, for example, legal advice, you know, pro bono legal advice, which can, which can make or, or break a business. Well, the first thing I think is, uh, you know, find a gap in the market. Don't try and reinvent the wheel. If you're just going to set up a business that 10 other people have already established, you're going to struggle. Uh, secondly, do something that you're absolutely interested in. I mean, people say passionate. I don't think, you know, of course, passion is important, but something that you know about, that you are interested in personally and professionally, because when you become an entrepreneur, it becomes your world. It's not a day job. It's 24-7. Uh, and finally, um, be systematic about it. Get a 
plan, put something down on paper, know where you're going, what are your objectives, what are you trying to achieve, what is the problem you're trying to solve, how much is going to cost you, what are the inputs you need, what are the outputs, I mean have a proper solid business plan, not just because you'll need that when you're talking to funders, but because you need it for yourself. Make sure that before you put any money into this venture that you are absolutely clear on what you're trying to achieve and what it takes to get there. Yeah, I think um, it's the enterprise ecosystem in the Middle East is still relatively nascent. So there is still a lot of work to be done in terms of building professional networks, in terms of uh, broad-based reform, in terms of advocacy to governments on how we can create a more conducive environment for enterprise. So clearly events like this uh, help to consolidate those networks and also connect the Middle East with other parts of the world. So we know that other parts of the world are uh, intrinsically more entrepreneurial, you know, be it a Silicon Valley or, or uh, obviously even, you know, the, the UK. So I think it's important that the Middle East has access to um, more mature enterprise ecosystems and I think you know the opportunity of being hosted here at Said Business School is that you bring a level of um, academic rigor to the discussions as well that it's not just your kind of informal networking that you actually are bringing a level of um, credibility because any of this stuff has to be evidence-based there's not enough resources to go around we can't afford to be wasting funds on on dabbling in creating enterprise it needs to be based on robust scientific evidence and you can only really um, source that from an academic uh, forum i think uh, you know it's something that uh, at emirates foundation we have realized that what young people need is a comprehensive enterprise ecosystem. You know, it's, it's all very well for us to tell young people, you need to create your own job. There are no jobs in the future. We don't know what the jobs of the future are. I mean, it's all very well for us to say that, but we need to, that's a huge challenge and young people need support to do that. So I think everybody can do their bit, that if we really believe the future for young people is to create their own jobs and become entrepreneurial, they cannot do it alone. And that's really what we're trying to do at Emirates Foundation is, is provide that support.